Let us pray. Most gracious heavenly God, may the meditations of my mind and the words of my mouth be holy and pleasing unto you. Amen. Y'all know this saying, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> That's the full saying, right? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Uh, have you ever noticed in life when you're talking to somebody about an experience, you feel a lot closer to them if they've had the same experience? If they've had the same experience and they know what you're talking about, you feel much more connected and you actually feel like you might be able to take some advice from them. Uh, this time last year, I was out because, do y'all remember, I threw my back out. Uh, I remember. <laughs> Maybe you remember now. And uh, so I called to make an appointment with the doctor. And it was one of those, you know, you call and you've got the sympathetic nurse on the phone. And it's Monday and they go, well, we can see you by Thursday or Friday. Uh, honey, that's not going to work. <laughs> can I see the physician's assistant? Can I see anybody? Oh, yeah. Well, if you come right now, you can see the PA. And so, and they directed me to where to go. And so I go and I'm, you know, I've got a stick so I can walk. And I sit down, and then they finally call you in the back. And the physician's assistant, they had me up, you know, on the examining table. And so you're sitting there, and then he asked me a question. Can you flip over on the table so I can examine your back? <laughs> well, if you've got time for this, I can. <laughs> sure, why not? And so I began to kind of scooch. Y'all know scooching, right? It's a whole lot slower than flipping. So I began to try to scooch. He goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I've seen enough. And so he then began to write me a prescription. And, you know, I know what you need. And as he began to talk to me about it, he then related to me, you know, it was about a month ago, I did the very same thing. And the nurse standing there goes, and so did I. I. You know, I think the whole office there had all thrown their back out in the last six months. <laughs> we then had some real camaraderie at that moment. He knew what I was going through. And it was a comfort to me, which is sad, it was a comfort to me that he knew my pain. But do you want a physician who knows your pain? I, I think so. Now, if you've never thrown your back out, I'm sure a lot of you have. Uh, I hear kidney stones are a good time. <laughs> no, I've never had one of those, so we can't relate on that. But if we've, I've seen some hands raised up. So we go through life and there are pains and things that we go through in life. And I think it's a deep comfort uh, as we enter into Lent to realize that as Jesus went out into the wilderness, he went through some things. It's one of those things that we need to understand is that God in Christ has been through some things as he went out into the wilderness. You know, I, I think we romanticize the wilderness being in the modern time. Uh, in Jesus' day, to go out into the wilderness was to go out where the demons were. It was to go out where things are not good at all. It's not like going camping uh, if you ever get to go to Israel and see the Dead Sea, there's not a lot going on out there. There's not a lot of places to get food. There's not any places to get water. There is no place to get comfort. Jesus went out into the opposite of what the good is. He went out into the difficult, the hard, the brutal. And we need to take comfort in that. That whatever we go through, whatever we've been through, Jesus has gone out into the midst of it. Now, there's kind of two theological reflections to think about on this. Number one, there is this idea of 40 days in the wilderness. It should ring a bell, the number 40. There's somebody else who went into the wilderness for 40. Anybody remember who they were? The Israelites. Yeah, the Israelites wandered around in the desert for 40 years because nobody would ask for directions. That's not the real reason, is it? No, they, they wandered around in the wilderness because they were disobedient. Yeah, they were. So they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. And in, in a way, Jesus is speaking to this idea that he is coming and replacing 
He is coming and fulfilling what they could not do and go into the promised land, the kingdom of God being the promised land that is to come. Uh, do you remember the Jordan River? They came through the Jordan River to come into the promised land, and Jesus goes through the Jordan River in baptism. I just want to connect some of these symbols and some of these things that Jesus is doing. And number two, there's another theological thought to remember is that in the wilderness, Adam and Eve were in the garden, and what they were unable to do was to overcome temptation. Adam and Eve did not overcome temptation, but who did overcome temptation? Jesus did. So in the midst of temptation, Jesus overcame all of that. So for us, you know, I, I think in, we enter into this season of Lent and we put ashes on our head and we remember the things we are sorrowful for. We are invited, this is the scripture we read every year when Lent rolls around. Uh, we read this as Jesus hands out in the wilderness that Lent is a season and time of going into the wilderness, a time of self-examination, a time of moving into the difficult. Because I don't think we often sign up for the difficult. Uh, do y'all sign up for the difficult? Not in, I used to because I wasn't smart. You notice if you do dumb things, you win dumb prizes. Some of you will get it later. But we don't really want to sign up for difficult, but life signs us up for us. Who took Jesus out in the wilderness? The Spirit took him out in the wilderness, and out he went into difficult, into hard. And you know, I, I'm willing to bet on any given Sunday, there are people sitting in the pews today that are hurting, that are mourning a loss, that have been lied to, that have been betrayed, that have difficult decisions to make. And I don't want you to know that in all of those things, Jesus has lived all of those. So he goes out into the wilderness to face down the demons, to face down the wild animals, to face down all of these things. And he goes out into temptation. And in Lent, it's a season for us often to go into that wilderness with Jesus. I was... Uh, went into Jerry's class this morning and the subject of Philmont came up, which is a Boy Scout camp. Um, I know some of y'all have been to Philmont. One, two, three. Nobody back there? Well, okay. Philmont is in New Mexico. It's a Boy Scout high adventure camp and you go backpacking for, I think it's 10 days? 10 days, uh, we walked 60 something miles with backpacks, carrying all of our food and supplies on us. It was into the wilderness. It was into the wilderness. And I went at 14 years old, and I think my backpack, they now have limits on how tall and how big you have to be. I don't think I would have made it. <laughs> they let me go anyway. So uh, off we went into the wilderness. And some people were going, why would you want to do such a thing? It was a great time. I had a wonderful time. Uh, I think something we, we need for young men these days is a rite of passage. And at 14, it was a rite of passage for me. Uh, going as a boy and, and in many ways coming back as a man uh, and being tested. Because guess what? Mom and dad were not there. I carried my food. I carried my tent. I carried my stuff. I unpacked and packed it every day. I washed my own clothes in streams and whatever clothes wash we could do. Uh, I didn't smell real good when it was over. You guys can picture this. Nobody smelled good when it was over. <laughs> Right? There wasn't any way you were going to smell good at the end of this. You were going to smell like a campfire and sweat. We hiked 60 miles in the mountains. We went from the beginning of base camp up to about 12,000 feet. Um, wonderful time. But somewhere around the second day, I lost my poncho. And it was the rainy season in the mountains in New Mexico. So guess what I did every day when we were hiking? I prayed it didn't rain. And I was a young man who was praying like he meant it. I walked through the mountains with God and with Jesus, and I prayed. Lord, it'd be really good if it didn't rain till about 2. 
two would be good. By then we'll have the dining fly set up. I can get underneath it. And you know what it rains like in the mountains in New Mexico in the summer? It doesn't just rain. It thunders, it lightnings, and hail falls. Uh, one, of the, one of the least exciting part about it was telling us we needed to walk at least 10 to 20 feet apart so if lightning struck, <laughs> it wouldn't kill everybody. <laughs> they don't tell you that before they go, do they? No. <laughs> You're thinking, preacher, I wish you wouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> it will improve your prayer life. <laughs> To walk in the mountains in a thunderstorm. But I can tell you this, at the end of that journey, at the end of that journey, I was closer to God and I was much more mature. I came off that bus when I got home as a mature young man. And I got on the bus going as a boy. We sometimes need to go into the wilderness. And we need to go into the wilderness with Jesus. So that we can experience and come to understand that in the difficult, God is there with us. I don't think we often sign up to be with God all the time unless we are in difficult. Unless we are in those places of difficult and pain. I think what we prefer... And having had the flu a week ago and they got me Tamiflu, after I took the first one, I thought, I wish the flu was over now. Don't y'all want the magical pill? Right? Uh, that's when my temperature went to about 101 and stayed there for about three or four days. Every time I took a Tamiflu, I was going, this is the one. What we would prefer in life is not hard. What we would prefer is an instant fix. You, you know, as Jesus went into the wilderness, he was still facing the cross before he could get to Easter. You see, Lent is a preparation time for Easter, but what we would prefer is, we would prefer just to be teleported to Easter. We would prefer just to be past all of the difficult and just have the party. While I was at SMU, I was in a fraternity, and my favorite party every year was the South Sea Island party. Now, what I've come to find out about human beings is we are all excited about going to the party, but few of us are excited about setting up for it. Uh, let me explain what I mean. What we would transform our fraternity house by going into the local neighborhood, and they, ex they were excited every year because we cut enough bamboo to hide the whole house. Now, if you've got bamboo in your backyard, you probably would like somebody to show up and cut it all down. We would show up, we would cut bamboo, and we would transform the, the house with bamboo. Not only did we do that, we ordered sand and sandbags and covered the whole backyard in sand in a beach and built a lagoon and filled it with water. We also built a bridge that came into the front of the house out of logs are you guys getting a picture of what this looked like? So by the time the party came around, guess what? Everybody wanted to go to the party, but how many people really wanted to help set it up? We, we are like that all the time. We don't want to go through the journey of the difficult to get to the party of Easter. But one thing I do remember is some of my favorite times was with my fraternity brothers when we were out setting up when we were cutting bamboo, when we were moving sand. Some of the greatest times I had was the fellowship through the difficult. Because then when the party came, it had a deeper meaning. It had a deeper place in my heart. Now, so you don't think this is like a self-works thing, um, there's the really interesting scripture there, the, the first one we read, had to do with that it is Jesus that did the work for us. What we were unable to do because of temptation and our failure, what, what happened in the garden, what happens continuously throughout our lives, through the sin that is around us, we are unable to save ourselves. But we are invited along with Jesus who helps us work out our salvation. 
He said, I think one of the things that we've done as modern people is we've shortened the meaning of salvation to getting us into heaven. Now, salvation does mean that. It is about getting us into heaven, but it's about more. It's about getting heaven into us in the here and now. And so salvation is this invitation to journey with Jesus where he goes through and he unpacks the brokenness and the hurts and the pains and the mourning and the illness and the places that we have been betrayed and we have betrayed because Jesus has been there and he's done that. And he carries us through it. One final story. See if I can draw this sermon together and land it. It's kind of a cute story. It's about a fellow uh, who was walking one day and he fell into a hole that was there in his street. They had dug a hole and just didn't mark it and he fell in the hole and he's down in the bottom of the hole and walks by a doctor. And he goes up, hey doc, can you help get me out of here? And the doctor wrote a prescription and dropped it in the hole. <laughs> okay. And then soon an attorney was walking by. Hey, hey, lawyer, can you, can you get me out? To which he wrote him a contract and dropped it <laughs> in the hole with him. And then the priest walks by. The priest, can you help get me out? And he wrote him a prayer and he, he dropped it in the hole. He's like, well, this isn't getting me anywhere. But finally, Joe, his friend, came by. Hey, Joe, can you help get me out of this hole? To which his friend jumped in. <laughs> Real steep. He's like, Joe, really? <laughs> I needed you to get me out. And Joe says, it's okay. He said, I've been in this hole before and I know the way out. We need to remember that whatever hole we fall in, Jesus has already been there and he knows the way out. My prayer for you is may you faithfully walk through those plans that Christ has for us so that we may know the healing in this life, which is eternal in the next. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.